Good evening, brethren and guests. I welcome you to this evening's event hosted by Mount Pleasant chapter number 13 to honor one of our most esteemed members of our craft, Right Worshipful Brother Harold Granger. Right Worshipful Brother Harold Granger. Most excellent Harold Granger. Right Worshipful Brother Harold Granger. Most excellent companion, Harold Granger. Most excellent companion. Harold Granger. Most excellent companion, Harold Granger. Most excellent, Aaron Granger. Honorary past senior grand warden of the Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. Most excellent companion, Harold Granger. Past grand high priest of Royal Arch Masonry of the District of Columbia. Most excellent, sir. And this evening I have been given the opportunity to tell you what I really think about you. It's hard to say a few things about Harold because there's so many good things to say about him. You have helped lead us in many ways. They tell me I should glorify you for about two hours. I don't think I can sit that long. And I know by now that you are probably complaining to everyone about they shouldn't be making a fuss over you. And tonight, I want to say thank you. You have always been good and generous to most of us. I know how you tell that to everyone, but the answer is we should be making a fuss over you. You are one of the people in masonry that I want to be like. I've been in the fraternity now, as you have, for over half a century. And I've seen many Freemasons pass by. You've done so much good for Grand Chapter. Thank you. Harold has been in masonry 60 years, and I've been in only 42 years. But of my 42 years, I've known, I've known Harold for most of my years here. Next year, you'll be getting a 60-year pin in Mount Pleasant chapter. You're the glue that holds that chapter together. He's one of those Masonic giants you always hear about. He's one of those men who have a very specific focus in mind, and that is why they're so good at what they do. Tonight is a very important night for you and for us. If we should honor anyone in this district, you will be one of them. And that's what we are doing. As one of the key figures in capitular masonry in the District of Columbia. You are a man who have shaped well large masons of the District of Columbia. What I really think about you is that you're a wonderful Freemason and a wonderful brother and a wonderful individual. Our fraternity teaches us many moral lessons and social virtues, and no one espouses them more, at least in my mind, than Harold Granger. And it is fitting that his Royal Arts chapter, Mount Pleasant number 13, honor him on this occasion. As um, Royal Arch Masons of the District of Columbia, we are here to celebrate you for all the hard work you've put into Royal Arch Masonry. He's always there for us. He's always been there for us. You're behind the scenes. You help with the ritual work. You help the high priests and the high priests select in organizing and keeping that chapter running strong. Most excellent companion Granger is often the one uh, to lead the rituals and exemplifications of our grand chapter. We are here to um, extol the virtues that you've transmitted to us, the younger generation. If our fraternity and then there has a, a Mason, a Mr. Mason, then Harold Granger is our DC Mr. Mason. You, sir, have set a standard of how a mason should conduct themselves. It's no wonder that they have you as the installing officer every year. You are a fine man. You are a generous man. If I need to know anything about Royal Lodge Masonry, you are the one to go to. I was watching the video of the laying of the cornerstone recently when all of the many masons marched into the celebration. He has taken the moral and social teachings of our craft and actually lives them. You've always willingly 
transmit knowledge to some of us and most of us without even asking. We admire you. And in many cases, he's also the one to help the newest Mark Master or the newest entered apprentice and teach them and say, don't worry about it, kid. I'll take care of you. Of course, with that, his lovely English accent. And I remember thinking that each one of those Masons had, was a story, a story that in many ways I was privileged to share. We applaud and respect you for the work you do in this jurisdiction. We cannot imagine what we can do without you. You've done a lot for our Grand Lodge, your lodges, and for other organizations. You've toiled in the quarry for well over 50 years. Herok um, teaches us a, a ritual. He's a fanatic about it because he not only teaches the ritual, the written word, but he lives it. What else can we ask? And I must say, we hope and pray that the good Lord will continue to bless you and guide you. There is no doubt that this honor being bestowed upon you is well deserved. When I think of you, I think of, I put you in a class with the highest and noblest of Freemasons. Congratulations. You have labored in the vineyard. We applaud you. It is incredibly important that we not only honor and remember and think about all of the things that he has taught us and continues to teach us, sometimes uh, <laughs> the hard way. You, sir, have made masonry in the District of Columbia one that all can be proud of. Many people don't know it, but you were a charter founding member of Universal Council Number 70, which sole purpose at the time was to bring diversification to this important organization whose members are active Royal Arch Masons. Probably without I'll leave somebody out, but uh, I'm thinking now of Marvin Fowler. I'm thinking of Charles Iverson. I'm thinking of John Wayne, who you know as Bill Jenkins. I'm thinking of Bill Cheney. I'm thinking of Ray McMullen and Leonard Proden. He's in everything and everywhere. If someone needs help with, a, with the work in their lodge or chapter or in the Scottish Rite, he's there with a willing hand and willing heart. But more so uh, because there are not many Masonic leaders like him. I think I first met you at Samuel Gomper's Benjamin Franklin Lodge, number 45. Uh, I was in line and you were an honorary member because of your help to our lodge. You have done a lot for masonry in general in the District of Columbia but specifically for the Grand Chapter of We Are Large Masons. But, and I'll throw in Dutch Albert into that group. When I think of you, I think of, as we both do, Freemasonry as it was, as it is, and as it will be. He's always there with a smile, and he's always telling us are showing us the right way to do things and the right path to take. Uh, there are not many men who over the years have continuously given to the craft. I will always, always defer to you in any matters concerning masonry because as we all know, you don't learn masonry through books, you learn masonry through example. I recall that every time I would go to a memorial service, there would be our good brother, Harold Granger, conducting it. And I've never seen him ever slow down. I've been with you at many, many occasions, Masonic and otherwise, and you give it your all. 
It's very easy to get caught up in titles and honors, jewels, collars, uh, but it is the intrinsic work. It's what he, what he wears in his heart and how he thinks and how he treats his brethren, his companions, and how he continues to serve those brothers and companions that makes him so special. Not only letter perfect, but with the heart, putting his heart into it. And the family of our departed brother could really feel the love that you have for both them and the deceit. And of course, you did those rituals letter perfect. And some of us who have been fortunate to learn from you will continue this great tradition from generation to generation. He's always out there doing something, if not only in the lodges, but in life. And you, sir, Harold, have done just that for us here in the District of Columbia. He's always interacting and helping people. You're loved by everyone in our Grand Lodge and our ancillary bodies. He's always looking out for the good in people. When I think of you, I, rem I recall how you and I worked together on the Friends Life Care at Home project. You especially help our members by your activities with Mesh Charities, Inc which supports our members, our Eastern Star members, their widows, and others who need our help. And for that, we are eternally grateful. And I very rarely, if ever, had, had him say a bad thing about anyone. We started with a blank sheet of paper, and we drove to Pennsylvania several times and laid the foundation for what we think is going to be and continues to be an excellent program for our fraternity. But tonight's about you, and you should be proud that we care enough to make a fuss over you. I do know that Harold has a great love for our craft, and he's not stuck in the past of it, though. When I think of you, I'm reminded that Jerry Salmon and I had a little part in bringing you into Scottish Rite Freemasonry. I was privileged to see you, I believe it was in 2002, and to watch you progress to the time when you got your, when you became a 33rd degree Mason. I hope they kept it a secret from you. It's hard to do that because you're everywhere. He looks at at our craft and he looked for younger members and he knows that as time comes things change as life changes but if it is then this should be a good surprise a well-deserved surprise and we look forward to your continuing support to our lodges to our royal arch chapters and to all the other organizations that you're a member of the only real flaw you have is you don't seem to understand the game of football. And he's an ex at, at his age, people are tend not to like change and not to approve change and try to resist change. But Harold wel welcomes it and encourages it. Somehow I keep hearing from you about a strange game where they kick the ball into a net. Football is an entirely different game. He says, as long as it doesn't change our values and our moral compass, we should embrace change because it will improve us. Change improves our, our processes. It, it brings us new members and brings us into more light. Everybody who knows you, my friend, respects you, loves you, considers you an important part of the fraternity and a friend. I'd never known a man more so that I could turn to for help, turn to for advice, than, than Harold. And that's what we look for. We look for someone that 
we can reach out and touch when we need. And who reaches out and touches us when we don't need them? Thank you for your wisdom and love for our chapter. We look for that friendship that just opens up our lives, that breathes life to us. I have a poem that I always loved, and one line says, the sweetness of the water till I found it flowing in the desert, nor the value of a friend till I found him in a foreign land. And Harold is that friend in a foreign land. Thank you also for everything you have built before us so that uh, we can uh, establish the historical context in which all our lessons are based. Because we live in a multitude of mankind and sometimes we just exist, but we can't exist properly without friends and family. And Harold is that friend. And I want you to know that I consider you a friend as well. We're very lucky to have him in this jurisdiction. I'm very lucky to have learned a lot from him and continue to learn from him. I only hope I can continue to do so for many, many years. I applaud you and I raise your name up high and we wish you well. Thank you for everything. Thank you. We wish you well. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a blessing to have you in our chapter of Freemasonry in general. My love, my admiration to you and forever. God bless you and Godspeed. Enjoy this evening. Take it all in because everyone here is your friend and loves you. Thank you.